So there's, um, there's this patient, you know, again, the socket's compromised, and um, I'm just creating as much of a tissue pocket as I can because the periosteum, you know, bone is gone. Um, so you go deep enough to get some plane going. And then see, here's the hockey stick incision. It's coming across all the way opposite, opposite the socket. I'll try pedicle most of the time, but it ends up being a free sometimes because this thing is too thin up here. So there we are. We did that incision to the pellet. There's the deep one, the distal, and now it's freed up to where I can feed it under the tunnel. Boom. There's my mineros that's been soaked in gem 21. Uh, I'm just trimming the end of this, and now I'm going to come in with my FS2 needle, member nylon 5-0, and now I continue to um, place the CTG within the, the pouch. There's my horizontal mattress, and um, off and running. So here's this patient now at eight months, and bingo, you know, w it, all, all you need is five months. With his schedule in mind, we didn't coordinate, but we waited eight, and by eight months, phew, you've got D1 bone. With Mineros and PDG, it's T1. It's not even D2. It's beautiful bone. But then here comes, you know, the culprit. I could have addressed this when I did my pedicle, right? Because think about it. I will have gone across here, but I went over the, over the, in other words, I suppressed this. I didn't deal with it. I should have and could have. Eh, not necessarily. You deal with it now. Cut that sucker. All right? Boom. You want to know the extent of it? Sure. In other words, does it go right up to the base and is it, continues with the nose, nasal floor? Sure. No problem. I need to know how deep it is. So I widen it, clean it out. By clean it out, I mean clean it out. I'll show you a video. I cut it for starters. I burn it with the ball cautery, you know, unit from <laughs> Elman, and go with an eight-round burr and then just burnish everything, get nice good bleeders. And then I come in with my small curette and just clean out all the residual crap. And I'm either grafting it, which I would in this case, or in my edent, you know, full arch cases, implant will maybe go right in there. Just depends on, on the anatomy. Plenty of articles. This is just a, you know, a, a few citations on why it's okay to obliterate everything in that canal and not worry about what? Numbness of the palate? Is that a big deal if it even happens? Those of us that, you know, have done, I don't know, it happened for a number of years, but, you know, the Ford osteotomy, down fracturing maxilla, that sucker gets cut all the time. You know, there's the article about lateralization of the bundle. It's a nice academic-based article. It's good for tenure and some other good things, but for practicality, to be quite honest, why would you lateralize the nerve and graft that site to protect and preserve blood supply? Okay. Me? A little different approach. I just get it out of my way, and it's not a big deal. And that's what I do. Once I've burned it and cleaned it and what have you, there's the eight-round burr. Really getting good bleeders and cleaning. There's my curette to clean out and burnish all any residual tissue. Uh, again, you, you look at your, your scan. And, and that'll dictate, you know, how far you can go down safely. But for the most part, I'll, I'm right to the end of it. And I clean it. And now if I have a membrane concern of the nasal mucosa, if I even think I have a perf, cut a, call a plug in half and squeeze it and just thumb it right up in there and just that'll protect. And then you graft over that. 